hyperbolas. So on your screen right now, these are the equations for hyperbola. So hyperbola is almost like, you can think about it as two parabolas going in opposite directions, or you can look at it as an ellipse that's um, been basically flipped inside out. Um, the formulas are very similar to an ellipse, but there's a couple key little differences. The first major one is it's subtraction and not addition. And because it's subtraction, the bottom never changes. The a squared is always first, the b squared is always second. What changes is the top. So it's x minus a squared is a horizontal. And if I put the y first, the y minus k squared, that's going to be your vertical. So depending on where the x and the y is, depends on which direction it's either going to go, horizontal or vertical. The center, the vertices, and the foci are all exactly the same concept. The only difference in this situation is, is that your foci is, a, uh, is basically the Pythagorean theorem. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's not minus, because my foci are now outside, past where my vertices are, and not inside the actual ellipse, because we're going out. So there is two more pieces of information, though, I do have on this one. I have a transverse axis. That's going to go um, either horizontal or vertical, depending on which one goes first. If it's uh, the x first, then it's a horizontal axis going through the y value. And if it's vertical, it's a vertical axis going through the x value. And we also need to find my asymptotes. The asymptotes are going to be two um, perpendicular lines that are going to go through the, the center. <coughs> and basically give you your bounds so that the hyperbola is never going to touch those as it's going further and further up. Those are your asymptotes for the horizontal and vertical asymptotes, kind of like for horizontal and vertical um, hyperbolas, kind of like we're looking at rational functions that we have the vertical asymptotes or the slant asymptotes, those things. These are the asymptotes for hyperbola. Okay, so those are the equations. And we're going to use these to find the next, the next six problems. Very similar. We're going to do some graphic ones, and then we're going to start flipping and solving some equations for them. All right. So to graph, I believe, center, vertex, and that's it. All right. So, to graph, we need my center. We need a vertex. And we need the asymptote. So, remember your center is H, K. Your vertex, depending on the direction, you're either going to add or subtract the A from the H or the K, whichever one um, is first. So in this problem, I'm doing it to the H. And your asymptote is y equals negative or plus or minus b over a x minus h plus k. The only difference on the asymptote between the two is is either b over a for the x or a over b for the y. So it's always the um, the second one over the first one, basically. So let's find our information. So in this case, my center is going to be 2 and negative 5. My A is 5, and my B is 1. Because remember, this problem, A is always first and B is always second. So since my X is first, I'm going to add or subtract the A from the X value. So my vertex is negative 3, negative 5, and 7, negative 5. The matter is subtracting 5 from the 2. And my asymptote is y equals 
plus or minus 1 over 5 x minus 2 minus 5. Okay. So when we graph this, we graph our center. So I'm going to go over 2 and then down 5. I'm going to graph my vertex. So it's at negative 3, negative 5. And now I have to place my asymptote. So from here, so when you're looking at it, the easiest way to do your asymptote is go to the center, go to the point on your line, which is the center, and do your slope from there. So I'm going right here. I'm going to go up one and over five. So one, two, three, four, five. So up one and over five. And that gives you your slope. So you don't necessarily have to find another point on it. You just start with the center and do your slope from there. And my perfect streak is always going to go. Oh, I know what it is. So two negative five. Seven negative five. And now I'm gonna go up one. One, two, three, four, five. It pays to count correctly. So the other thing you can look at is since it's A and B, and I know I'm going to add or subtract the um, the A in this case, it's basically it's always going to be somewhere around your vertex. It's either going to be your major vertex or your um, co vertex. So it kind of helps you figure out which value you want to. But just zoom in a little bit if you have to. to Make sure you're on the right spots. Questions with how we graph this one? Right. Same thing, we just have to solve it first. So I've got the 16x squared minus 25y squared equals 400. So I'm going to divide the whole thing by 400. So I get x squared over 25 minus y squared over 16 equals 1. So my center is 0, 0. My A is 5, and my B is 4. So my vertex, the A is underneath the X, because X is first. So my vertex is, is negative 5, 0, and 5, 0. Then my asymptote is Y equals negative 4 fifths plus or minus four fifths, x plus zero plus zero. And since you're not actually writing the asymptote, putting, writing the zeros down is going to be correct. So now we're going to graph it. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can make sure we graph it correctly. So my vertex, or my center is at zero, zero. 
my vertex is at 5, 0. And now from there, I'm going to go up 4 and over 5. One more graph and we're going to do Again, this adds some more stuff to help. Any questions finding the asymptote? Does that make sense? Really, it just goes all down to finding the h, the k, and the e, and the b, and then plugging them into those equations. All right. Same thing we were doing for the ellipse and the um, circle. We've got to put stuff together and solve it. So I've got 9x squared plus 72x. I've got negative 4y squared and negative 32y equals 64. So I'm pulling up to 9, so I've got x squared plus 8x, and I'm pulling out a negative 4. So I got y squared minus 8y, or plus 8. So something very important is, is on this part right here. Because remember, in the hyperbola, it matters which one is first and second. The second one is always going to be the minus for minus one. So in this case, they gave me a negative 4y squared and a negative 32y. So I pulled out a negative 4. That was going with the y. So I know my y values are second because they have the subtraction in front of them. And then my 9 for the x was positive, so it's going to be the first one. So now I've got to add in my um, perfect square part. So I'm 8 divided by 2 is 4, 4 squared is 16. So I'm adding 16 here. And I'm adding 16 here too. So I'm adding 16 times 9, which is 144. And I'm adding negative 4 times 16, which is negative 64. So my final equation is x, well, almost final, plus 4 squared minus 4 y plus 4 squared equals 144. Now I'm going to divide the whole problem by the 144. So I get 16 x plus 4 squared, which is my 16, x plus 4 squared over 16 minus y plus 4 squared over um, 32 equals 1. Nope, not 32. Um, oh, 36. Thank you. All right. One thing now, in every other problem we've done so far, I said A always has to be bigger. In a hyperbola, A does not have to be bigger. A is always the first one. So that is a big little distinction between the hyperbolas and the other ones is that it doesn't matter which one's bigger. A is always the first one. All right, so in this problem, I've got my center is negative 4, negative 4. I've got A is 4 and B is 6. So my vertex, 
um, I'm going to add or subtract 4, so from the x value. So I've got negative 8, negative 4, and 0, negative 4. And then my asymptote is y equals plus or minus 6 over 4, x minus 4, minus 4. So when we graph this, we place my center, negative 4, negative 4, place my vertex, and now from there I'm going to go up 6 and over 4. So lots and lots of calculations for a simple little graph. All right, three more, and they're all solving. They're all um, coming up with the formulas. Or first one's actually coming up with all the information. All right, so this one's very similar to what we're doing with the graph. We just don't have to actually graph it at the end. So, again, whenever I'm looking at the problem, I always want to pull out my H, my K, my A, and my B. So, remember, H always has to go with X. H is not always first in a hyperbola. So in this case, my h is 6, and my k is negative 8. That's a change from when we're doing the ellipses and everything else where x was always first, so therefore the h was always first. My a is 2, and my b is 5. So now we can find our c. So c squared equals 2 squared plus 5 squared. So c squared equals... 29, so c equals the square root of 29. Now that I've got those pieces of information, I can find all of my stuff. So my center is 6, negative 8. My vertices, now in this case, my vertices, I'm going to be adding and subtracting to the y because the y is first. So it's 6, and I'm adding and subtracting 2 from the negative 8. So I've got negative 10, and 6, negative 6 are my two vertices. My foci. I'm doing the same thing, except I'm going to add and subtract the C. Now, if you notice in this one, C is the square root. They actually want the square root there. So it's going to be 6, negative 8 plus square root of 29, and 6, negative 8 minus the square root of 29. And then your asymptote is y equals. Now, since the, a, the y is first in this case, it's b over a instead of a over b. Oh, sorry. a over b. So this is negative 2 over plus or minus 2 over 5, and it's x minus 6 minus 8. <coughs> so it's a over b from the asymptote. So we have 6, negative 8, 6, negative 10, and 6, negative 6. 
A foci is 6, negative 8, plus square root of 29, and 6, negative 8, max. Square root of 29. So you have to put them both in with the, um, the square root of 29. Now, your asymptotes, you also have to put them both in. So we've got two fifths. And they don't want you to use parentheses, so we have to actually clean this up. So y equals two fifths x minus negative 12 fifths minus 8. Um, so we have four, negative 40, negative 50, so we'll be 5 for the first one. And then y equals negative 2 fifths x plus 12 fifths minus 8, which is negative 2 fifths x minus 20 over 5. So I have to do a little bit of arithmetic. Don't forget your common denominators. And the two fifths x minus twenty over five. So don't forget your common denominators to change your fractions or use Desmos um, to do your fractions there. Really easy to make a simple little mistake on your fractions and get the answer wrong and not realize that what the real mistake was. The big key is that they never want decimals, so you want the exact answer you put in. Yes. What happened that it, that wouldn't let you put the parentheses in, so you had to factor that x into it and solve yep. it? Yep. That's exactly what it wouldn't let you put the parentheses in. I tried. That was the first thing I tried. <laughs> so, yeah, you have to actually, it won't let you put parentheses, so you have to actually solve it out. Always try first. Is the less work you have to do, the easier it's going to be. All right, this one is looking for the foci. So the first thing I have to do is solve my equation. So I've got 9x squared minus y squared plus 4y equals 40. So I've got 9x squared minus 5 squared minus 4y equals 40. So I'm going to figure out the um, perfect square for the second part. So 9x squared negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2 squared is 4. Minus 4y plus 4. So I'm adding a negative 4 to this side, so I have to subtract 4 from that side. So I get 9x squared minus y minus 2 squared equals 36. So I'm dividing the whole problem by 36. So x squared over 4 minus y minus 2 squared over 36 equals 1. So from here, I now have my My center is 0 and 2. So I have A is 2 and B is 6. And now I need to figure out my C. So C squared equals 4 plus 36, which is 40. So C equals the square root of 40. So I'm adding and subtracting the square root of 40. 
from the center. So I have now, and I'm doing it to the x value because the x value is first. So it's square root of 42 and negative square root of 42. So now, here's a great example of why you always try something before you get simplified down. It can be simplified square root of 40, but they accept the square root of 40. So don't worry about simplifying. All right, one more to go. <coughs> All right, so this one, they're giving me my foci and my vertices. So, as with everything, my pieces of information I need is H, K, A, and B. And I also need to know which one the A goes up, the, which one's first, the X or the Y. Now we can figure that based on which change. So in this case, my foci and my vertices, the value that's changing is always is my x's. So the x is going to go first. So my a is with my x because all my x values are changing. So let's find my center first because the center is going to help me figure out um, my a value and then I can figure out my b value or my c value and my b value. But I need to find my center first. So let's take one of the, the vertices, which is fine. So 6, negative 3, and 8, negative 3. So the center is going to be 7, negative 3. So I've got 7 and negative 3. So my A is plus or minus 1. So in this case, my A is 1. Now, my foci, I have 4, negative 3, and 10, negative 3. And again, my center is still 7, negative 3. So from here to here, from here to here, is 3. So C is 3. Using that, I can now find B. So I have 3 squared equals 1 squared plus B squared. So 9 equals 1 plus b. So 8 equals b squared. So b is the square root of 8. Now that I have that, I can write my equation. I know my x is first because that's the one that everything's changing on. If my y's were changing, my y would be first. So in this case, I got x minus 7 squared over 1 minus y plus 3 squared over 8 equals 1. That is probably going to tell me I didn't need to divide by 1. Oh, it didn't. So, that would be the hyperbolics. There it is. This.